Oh. Hold on. Okay, good. Alright, so... Uh, the second video I got requested to do was to tell my story. Candy, come and join us. Candy, come here. Come here. No, or not. Um, was my story, but in a video. Because I know a lot of people uh, didn't get the link to the story or uh, just didn't read it because it's kind of boring to read. Because um, it's super long. But basically that's what Candy, shut up. Come here! Come here! Come here! Aww. Aww. Okay. Um, so yeah. Uh, I get a lot of people asking me, like, did your parents abuse you? No. My parents never abused me. My parents were amazing to me. They were, like, 110%. Like, they were... Um... She saw a dog. Alright. And I have a brother who struggles with more severe mental illness, like not, you know, depression or anorexia, stuff like that. He deals with um, more terminal sort of, Ill yeah, it's complicated. But I'm not going to get into that because that's my brother's business. And yeah, but that was a huge trigger for me as a kid because he was really violent as a kid and he would he would take that out on me and... He was hospitalized uh, four years ago, something like that. His grade nine year, he was hospitalized um, for a suicide attempt. So my parents were gone a lot of the time. Um, and I didn't really know why he was there. Like, I didn't know why he uh, had left. Um, my parents just told me he was sick. So I was kind of like, you know, like... I, I just started thinking about, you know, my childhood and, uh, and, and just Stuart in general, and I knew how hard he was to live with and how hard he was to raise, um, and how tough that was on my parents, and I sort of felt like I had to compensate for him, like, I kind of had to be, like, I wanted to be the daughter that my parents could, like, go to people and be like, look how, you know, great my kid is. But growing up, I was, like, not the typical, like, girl who dresses in pink dresses every day and, like, is super into makeup. Like, I was a really big tomboy when I was a kid, so I weighed more than most girls in my class. And I show people my passport picture, and they're all like, is that you? Because I look like a man. Um, and so, this was sixth grade, so this is kind of like my last year of... Like, I got sick of being, like, the butch kind of person. And so, I was like, I can't change who I am. I can't really change my face. But I can change my body. I was kind of like, there's an idea. I was like, there, you know, I, I can lose weight. And maybe, you know, then I'll be slimmer and I'll look more like a girl. So, it started out as I just started doing things like, um... For breakfast, I would, like, spread jam on toast, and I would just lick the jam off. Sugar-free jam. <laughs> um, then I would... So I, I lived, like, a block away from my elementary school, so I would, like, run the last, like, 100 feet from my elementary school just because, and I would exercise through lunch. Um, and then my suppers would be, like, a, like smart ones, like those little prepackaged frozen meals. Um... And I would have that for supper, and then I wouldn't eat for the rest of the day, and I had dance on top of that, so I was burning off everything that I was eating, and I wasn't taking anything in, and then before I went to bed, I had exercise regimens I would do, I would do uh, 15 sit-ups, I would do whatever, bicycle crunches, 100 of those, I would do 100 squats, however many push-ups I could do until I, like, fell over, and I'd run on the spot, and stuff like that. And my parents just kind of thought I was getting into shape because I was bigger. So, like, they never really thought anything of it. And I'd say from August to December, I lost a good, like, 50 pounds. Um, which I was watch I remember I was watching this weight loss commercial and this girl lost 45 pounds over the course of a year. And I was like, it's been, like, four months and I've lost more weight than you. Like, I must be doing something right. And then I remember it was December 19th. 
uh, I don't know why I remember the date, but my parents were like, Heather, like, are you okay? Like, they, they had, no, they, like, wondered, I think they thought something was wrong, but they never thought it was an eating disorder, because, like, no one in my family had ever dealt with that before, so I was, they just kind of thought that I was dealing with a lot of stress and stuff like that. Um, and so that was kind of the first time around that it was really bad, and then, Second time around, you know, it was okay for about a year. I started eating more, and I started, you know, I gained a bit of weight. And then it was my grade 8 year, like, the year before I went into high school. And I remember it just being, like, I, I don't feel ready for high school. Like, I didn't feel pretty enough. I, I felt like I had to be, you know, I had to be something more than I was to be accepted in high school and stuff like that. So I was like, yeah, I'll just whip myself into shape. So I started doing that. I started going for runs every morning and I started eating egg whites instead of eggs and, you know, stuff like that. But naturally your body gets hungry because you need a lot more than what I was eating. And so I toyed with the idea of throwing my food up. So it started out as I would chew food and spit it out. I would like kind of make a game out of it, chew and spit and like... I would just chew a granola bar and then just spit it all out in the garbage. So, like, I wouldn't get any of the calories. I would just get the taste. But then I was like, I still feel super fat and I still feel super gross. So, what if I actually, you know, like, purged it? Um, and I got really good at purging. I got to the point where I could just, like, move my stomach and I would just throw up. Um, and... It was Halloween, and I had just started dating this guy, and we had been walking around, and um, I came home, and I had all this candy, and I ate, like, half of it, and then I went to throw up, and I couldn't. Like, I just, I couldn't purge, and, um, and then... A lot of people think that I lie about this, but, like, there was a voice. And, like, I don't know if that was part of some other, like, issue. Um, but I heard them, and they were just like, it's okay. Like, it's okay that you didn't, you know, throw anything up. It's alright. Like, there's another day tomorrow. You can throw up tomorrow. And I was kind of like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, this is weird. I don't know why people would, like... I don't know, like, what this means, and then after that, I woke up the next morning, and she was like, you woke up late, and I was like, it's only, like, nine o'clock, and she was like, yeah, but, you know, you woke up late, because, you know, usually I did exercise before I woke up, before I, like, got up and got ready and stuff like that, and I remember looking in the mirror, and she was like, you're bloated today, I was like, thank you for telling me, um, and she was like, I can help with that. And I was like, I would like that. And so from then on, I listened to her. And so in the morning, she would, I would like go into the kitchen and she, I would eat like celery stalks for breakfast. Um, or I would have like special K like diet cereal. Or I would, I did, breakfast I used to like was... Splenda and Diet Pepsi because it had no calories in it um, and then at 1037 I had a piece of spearmint gum and then I would have lunch and then I would come home and I would have a rice cake and a cup of tea and then supper would be like a potato some frozen vegetables and a piece of chicken or something and then if I was still hungry after that I would you know get a handful of grapes or a handful of cereal or something like that um, and I had my fitness pal which is like a dieting app and I would look up all the calories of everything so now I just know the calories of everything as I said in my last video and um, that was hard because I, I didn't eat fa I didn't eat family dinners anymore. I was eating in my room or 
um, I would tell my parents, you know, yeah, I bought some Caesar salad at lunch and I eat that. And they would just think I, I was being serious. And, you know, in a way, I almost wish that my parents had kind of come to me and been like, Heather, we know that you're doing shitty. Um, but they didn't. Uh, and I kind of had to come to them and be like, because at that point I was scared. Because I didn't have a voice anymore. It was just Trixie. And, and I hate it when people think that they have eating disorders that are just, you think you're fat. Because it wasn't even that. It was just like someone else was like in my head. And someone else was like, instead of me saying, like, you look ugly today, you look fat today, it was like, it was someone else. And it felt so much more real to have someone else tell you, like, you look fat today. Because, like, I valued everyone else's opinion so much more than mine. And it was like, if you're having a shitty day, like, exercise, exercise, restrict, restrict, like, run that extra half block, you know, don't have the piece of gum in the morning, just fast throughout the day, fast today, drink water, drink Diet Pepsi, to, like, it, it's, it's so hard to put it into words how an eating disorder affects you, because it's, it just takes over your life, and it's everything you do, it's not just eating, it's like, you, you, you have to do things at a certain time or something bad will happen to you. Like I exercise, I would wake up at 6.35 every morning and I would exercise because it was like, I couldn't wake up at 6.30 or 6.40, it was 6.35. I had to get up and exercise. 10.37, I had to have that piece of gum. And you know, even now, like I struggle with eating things at different times because it's like at noon, I have to have lunch. I can't have it later. I can't have it before. I have to have it at noon. I have to have my snack at four o'clock. Like it's, it, even now in recovery, like I feel like people think that this thing's just totally gone from me and it's just, it's, you know, I'm just totally fine and I'm not. Like I still struggle with it every day and I'm so sick of people like coming to me and being like, you're doing this for attention. You're only sharing your story because you're faking it. Like, I have fucking psychiatrists that you can go talk to. Like, I will give you the name of my psychologist. I will give you the name of the dietitian at the hospital. I will give you the name of nurses in the psychiatric unit. Like, I can prove that I actually go through this. And the reason I share it is because I had no one to look to. I had no one that I could be like, she, she gets it. And I want to be that person for someone. And I think this is where I'm going to end off part one of this. Because this is like 15 minutes long. Um, but part two, I will focus more on my hospitalization. And what went on in the hospital. But this is part one. And I'm just sort of like explaining what generally happened. Um, but to end this off, I just want to tell people that... Um, as cliche, I feel like the secrets to life are hidden behind cliches because people just pass them off and are just kind of like, yeah, everyone says that, but it's true. And when I say everything's going to be okay, I mean, it might not feel like it, but as long as you're not wanting to kill yourself, I think that's a pretty good step forward. So yeah, that's the end of this. And I will see you in part two.